Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Run through the land, you run through my soul. Bring me wisdom and peace. Run through all ages. Welcome to be my guest today. We have Christine Beauchene, and she is from Whitensville, and she is a brand new author, a published author. And uh, Christine, how did I? Where did I hear about your book? How did we connect? Uh, you reached out to me on LinkedIn, actually. And that's how I saw about your book. It is. This is, the title reminds me of downtown Whitensville, because I lived there for how many years? It's called Lost and Found at the Boladrome. I, I love that. Uh, where did you, first of all, how did you think of that? I am not really sure. It just kind of came to me. The Boladrome had this old-fashioned sort of feel. Yeah. There used to be almost 10,000 bowling alleys in the United States in the not late anymore. 50s and the early 60s. Now they're down to a few hundred, four or five hundred. Why do you think? I don't know. I'm not really sure. I've noticed it too. It, it seems uh, bowling is fun. Yeah, I, I, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not good. I am awful at it. I'm oh, I'm awful too, but I'm good. <laughs> Not good. I tend to just get real excited. I just go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have those issues myself. Yeah, if I get it, I like. I don't know if I like the heavier ones or the little ones. Little ones are easier for me to just shoot down the thing. The bowling one is like it's like a big one. I like, think I bowl equally poorly with either size. Probably the little one. I might stand more chance <laughs> at competing. I don't even know how to keep score. I've tried to keep score many times. You know, no matter how to, you know on that that thing that looks like a grid. Yep. I usually have to ask for help. <laughs> I'm like, don't make me your scorekeeper. You know, let me be your comic, you know, relief, but don't put me as your scorekeeper. That's actually <laughs> how I thought of the book yeah. because my kids used to bowl in the league, right? In what downtown Whitensville yeah. spare time recreation. And they spent a lot of time at the bowling alley keeping score and refereeing their fights because sometimes they would fight yeah. with each other yeah. and adults do that too. <laughs> they do. <laughs> So you bowl, you bowl um, not as well as the kids? They or? had a parent-child league during the summer, so yeah. I bowled with them sometimes. Sometimes I just went and kept score. But I hung out at the bowling alley a lot. And you liked So you got to really know a bowling alley. <laughs> I did. Did you see it in your sleep? <laughs> and it, it, it occurred to me, bowling has such a reputation as a, a working-class sport. Not necessarily. Yeah, right. it, it, it's not really yeah. elitist. It's not really... And, and I thought this idea of just bumping around in my head, you know, what if someone from the other side of the tracks embraced bowling? How would that go? How would that work? This this story, first of all, her cover was designed, it's, I love child art to begin with. Uh, I get a big kick out of it. In fact, if there's a gallery, the first thing I do is, I love abstract, but I'll go to the children's section. I don't know what, but this was, who was this designed? That was my son. He and designed it. He's 14, so he was... 13 when he did the cover. He was 13 and he did it in looks like colored pencil. He did. And it's a picture of the Boladrome sign and there's two, there's a car and what is that building? That's the building, that's the Boladrome. Okay, that's the Boladrome. It's sort of not, the building is not as important as the yeah. sign and yeah. the car, I guess. So. I, I, you know, I love seeing, I don't see, you don't see uh, covers like this. Usually if the authors go to a publishing company, do you know the author has no say? Really? Yeah. That's why we have a lot of self-published authors now. The publishing company picks what's on your cover. That's disappointing. Yeah, I, we've had a lot of, most of our authors are self-published and they have their own illustrationists, which you did, your son. You had the option of choosing your, uploading your own artwork yeah. or choosing their generic cover. Yeah. And I thought this was unique. I panicked yeah. because he had drawn the entire thing on a piece of paper yeah. and I uploaded it and my margins weren't right <laughs> and I didn't have enough space on the <laughs> edges and I got all these warning messages. So I had to actually cut out each piece and then paste it onto the yellow piece. I would never know. And upload it that way. It but it actually the yellow kind of makes it pop and oh yeah, it, it works out. It's a sunny. It's yeah. sunny. As soon as you see it's sunny. Then the back is you. Yours back is me and my other son took that picture. You're the editor of the Miscarriage website. I what am. is this? Um, so Bella Online is a website that hires experts in all different kinds of fields. So they have sub-websites. They have one on adoption and one on dieting and probably hundreds and hundreds. And I edit the Miscarriage website. So I'm responsible for weekly articles about miscarriage. Oh my God. 
um, interacting with people on the forums. Yeah. A lot um, of the moms who are going through this, and the dads. I had five myself my after my went boys were three. born. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I feel like if I can write about it and I can help somebody else, I can help myself. And, and I've been there. And we don't talk about it no. as a society. And so it happens to you, you feel terrible. And then in addition to that, you feel isolated yeah. because nobody talks about it. Well, no, my brother was born. And then each little one after that was miscarriage. Nine years later, I held on. <laughs> I mean, I look honest to God, I look like a sumo wrestler. I missed no meals in there. My father was worried because I was really, oh, well, I looked like a mutt. I looked like I was ready to really nail someone, but I was almost nine pounds. So I was, it was a good pregnancy. Yeah. She took good care of herself. But uh, you know, it always makes you wonder who were the three? Who were they? Boys, girls? I'll never know. Yeah, you, you don't know. Now, you have a blog about clutter. I do. Well, it started as a blog about clutter, yeah. and then it kind of evolved into, because I discovered there were more things I wanted to write about than clutter, yeah. and so it just sort of evolved just into me writing about whatever topic struck my fancy. When she's not writing, she works two jobs, and te two jobs, and teaches yoga. Do you ever sleep? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, not. What are these jobs? Um, I work for a very tiny company in Framingham that sells automotive literature. Uh -huh. um, in fact, when I picked the car for the book, I went and I dug the brochure up because it's a yeah. 49 Nash Air Flight. Yeah. And I looked at the original brochure that the dealer would have given out, yeah. and just try to see what it was like. And I used that to have him draw the picture. Um, so and I you teach yoga. I teach yoga. Where do you teach yoga? Right at the moment, this summer, I'm not teaching anywhere, but started in the fall, I have a class that runs at the Blackstone Valley Methodist Church. Oh, yeah. Okay, I remember, um, what did I used to go there for? They had, oh, they had a walking group one time. Uh, <laughs> they, they went out, they started at the bottom of Hill Street. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for in the heat. Well, I made <laughs> That's it quite a hill. quarter of the way, and I said, you know, I'm not so much, I don't feel good. <laughs> yeah. I knew when to stop. Yeah, that's quite a hell. Now, let me see, you also paint? I do. What's your style? Um, cartoony. <laughs> I, I took up painting last year just because I thought it would be fun. Yeah. I'm never going to be Picasso, but it's tremendously stress relieving and yes, it is. having a good time. What's, so. your, what's your medium? Acrylic? Acrylic. I do animals and landscapes mostly. I you're gonna get you on here with these, you know. <laughs> that would be awesome. Volunteer. I, Where do you volunteer? I volunteer. Um, I'm a special education surrogate parent, yep. so I go to IEP meetings for kids who are in the foster care system. Oh, okay, you're like an advocate. Yes. And then I also um, volunteer at the Blackstone Methodist Church. I started a clothing swap, a community clothing swap that we run three times a year. And I volunteered with my son at Dog Orphans in Douglas. Oh, I know that place very well. Yeah. Now, you must know Carolyn Mitchell. Oh, yes. Oh, dear oh, friend. Yes. She, she's at the, at the uh, Methodist Church. Now, let's get on with your book. This book, I'm not giving it away. You tell us in a nutshell, not all the ending or anything, basically what's the book about. And it's uh, Lost and Found at the Bolodrome. Okay, so Eleanor is a young woman in the early 1960s, and her parents have certain dreams, goals for her. They want her to be a debutante, have a debutante's ball and a coming out party. And it doesn't feel comfortable for her. It doesn't feel like the right fit. She's trying to be the person that they want her to be. Yeah. And through the course of the book, she discovers who she wants to be. Yes, she does. Now, <clears throat> I always wondered, your book is so accurate. Did you grow up in that time? I did not. You didn't, and yet you knew this time frame. I, I did a lot of research. Um, I had a tremendously good time with YouTube. I went and I looked back at uh, Kennedy's original speech when he announced the formation of the Peace Corps. I watched old newsreels. Okay. Um, that's actually a, a tremendously great compliment I've gotten yeah. um, from people who did grow up in that time and they said that I got the time period right, which made me tremendously well, happy. Well, that's what I wondered. I wondered if I had a fellow baby boomer with me. Yeah, no, I wasn't born until 69. You just missed it. I did just <laughs> miss it. <laughs> you did darn well. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now there are some places in here. This, this girl is, it's written in such a soulful way. This, is, this brings back my memories. You got sent to secretarial school. <laughs> Actually, I had to choose it. But she goes there. She says, I'm grateful to you for making secretarial school happen. She did her thing. 
all right? A lot of us were kind of nudged in that in different directions. You know, if you leave college, all right, now what are you going to do? And you didn't have a lot of options. No. As a woman, you could be a secretary or you could be a teacher or a nurse. Yeah, teacher. And probably you were going to give that up if you got married. <laughs> yeah, that's how we... The more I tried to sleep, the less I... The, the more I tried to sleep, uh, the less I could. My brain was just too busy. I barely recognize my life now. It was like there were two Eleanors. She didn't really know herself yet. She didn't. She didn't. She tried so hard to be the person that her parents wanted her to be, and yet that was such a bad fit for her. That just wasn't yeah. who she was. Yeah. Well, it's like me when I got into the corporate world. Not that I, you know, I was, I guess I was bored and I just hated that. Be there at this and you got to try the times, you clog and you got to, it's just like, it was like going to school all over again. This is when you get there, this is when it's lunch, and this. I think if you're a creative personality, if, if I may say so, that I think that it's rough because you, you need a lighter leash. Yes. I needed that. And I, I feel like people aren't encouraged to know this about themselves. If you understood how you processed information yeah. and what your strengths and your weaknesses were, you might not end up in a job that made you miserable or a life that made you miserable. Yeah. But it's not a thing that we teach in schools. And it's not a thing that people really understand about themselves, and so a lot of people do pick the wrong job, the wrong. Did you did uh, you ever have a teacher in school who zeroed in on something and told your parents she's good at it? Did you ever have that? Not really. There was a spooky situation. I was in first grade. I don't know where she got it. Uh, I um, I don't remember anything that would. But on, you know the report cards you used to send home. The teachers make comments. Right. <laughs> My teacher wrote, "Janet is a leader." Now that was probably the first shot off the bow to my parents because, oh gee, here we go, you know. I don't know where she got it, I guess I'll never know, but she told my parents I reminded her of, reminded her of herself. Ah. All I can recall is sitting at uh, snack time and the little girl beside me had a cookie or two, and I said, H can I have, no. So I said, she won't give me a cookie. And the teacher said, well, Jan, she doesn't have to. Well, I thought, well, isn't that mean? <laughs> I certainly would share with her. I don't know. I don't know where she got it, but... People um, sometimes see things in ourselves that we don't see in ourselves, and that could be a tremendous gift that yeah. someone sees something in you, and that's actually in my book, too. Yeah, oh, I know. It's, it's I, I think I remember the kids, you know that, oh, if you get on it now, you get sick. The whirly gig thing you ride? Oh, yep. Yeah. And I might have suggested something else, but she might have been watching, because she's, wait a minute, she has going and wants them to go in a different direction. Um... Gus. Now, Gus was very special. He is, without giving it to it, he was probably, well, I don't want to say it. What do you want to say about Gus? I think Gus is my favorite character. Yeah. Because he just, he does, he has that understanding about himself. He knows who he is, and he's comfortable with it. And he also understands that maybe not everybody is going to appreciate him for who he is, but he still, he, he doesn't her. try to be someone no. else. And he goes, there's nothing, she said a Rosemary, there's nothing wrong with supporting someone else's dreams. It's a good thing. You only bump into problems if your dreams are at odds with another or if one person only cares about their dreams. You know, this business, the, uh, they, they're, they got the blinders on. Yep. I never stood up for my dreams. In fact, it took me a long time to even acknowledge that I had them. And that's the way it was a lot growing up. We were expected. You're going to, I was expected to go to college. Definitely. God help me if I did. <laughs> well, I went there and I put two years in. I got... I'm bored. Well, I, you know, I'm coming home. <laughs> so I left, and but it was made clear when I got there. All right, you got a couple choices there. You're not going to just stay home. You're going to do this, or you're going to do this. So I figured, I think where Dad's going with this. So I went, <laughs> I went with business school. Right. He was putting the bill, but it was individualized learning. We were all in the same room, learning the same thing, but I didn't have to compete. We all went at our own. I was out for uh, six months. Yeah. I, but it shows you the difference where I was failing in high school and typing in this huge room of kids. I was acing it in... Right, and we all learn differently. We yeah. all have different ways that we process information. One way worked for me the best. Absolutely. If you get lucky in school and you have a teacher who notices this, I think you're more likely to get better grades. I think you also feel cared about and, okay, that one understands me. Right. Like you take a kid with ADHD, this type of thing, and they do, they learn differently. We have such a cookie cutter approach yeah. to learning sometimes. Yeah. Um, and really everybody learns differently. Christine, you have written, this is your first 
self-published book. It is. But you told me you've written before. I have. Right. I actually, I wrote a novel about 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's a medieval. It takes place in medieval times. It's a full, complete novel. And probably now that I've gone through the self-publishing process and I understand how it works, I will probably publish that one as well. But I decided to participate in National Novel Writing Month last year. That's when I wrote That's what and you found did. at the Bullet Drum. Yeah. And I wanted to start with something just brand new, something that I hadn't been working on for yeah. over a decade. Right, right. Um, so I do have that. I'm working on a, a memoir. Um, of your own growing up. Um, well, about the miscarriages. Yeah. And then after five miscarriages, I lost my daughter when she was four days old. So on top of that, she died of severe congenital heart defects. And I would like to write about that in hopes of helping somebody else. Very much going so. Through that Very sort much of thing. so. Um, are you in connection at all with Memorial, uh, UMass Memorial? Um, no. Because they have, that's, my son was born there. They have a fantastic. Uh, birthing situation, neonatal, he was in the neonatal unit. And, um, you know, I have a lot of connections over there, and I certainly, if you do get this, we will get that word out there. Oh, that's awesome. A lot of moms and dads grieving over the loss of these children. It's, it's really difficult, the, the support. Yeah. I can remember after my first miscarriage, my doctor had a bookcase that went floor to ceiling with every topic you could imagine, you know, breastfeeding and baby care. And she didn't have a single anything Your about mom. miscarriage. No, my doctor. Your doctor. And yeah. she was fine. She, she had nothing. She had nothing. Nothing on miscarriage. No. That's odd. And so, yeah. But there's probably all over the internet, too, right? You have but, to really look. Yeah, but it, it's better, from I think, from where you sit, because you're giving your own experience, the feelings, the emotions, right. that another woman could share that she might not share with someone else. Yeah, absolutely. And especially if you do feel isolated and not everyone feels yeah. supported in their lives. Yeah, and um, like her, her best friend, her pregnancy went through, but hers didn't. Right. I remember when my son was maybe two, three, or four, there was a much younger couple across the street. We won't get it. We just couldn't seem to have a child. And so I'm scratching my head thinking, what sense does this make in the nature of things? That's true. You know, we were like 10 years older than they were, and it wasn't happening for them. Yeah. yeah, and then I, I'm actually working on a, a third novel. I hope to participate in National Novel Writing Month again in November. Yeah. And my third novel actually takes place in present day, and it deals with infertility and miscarriage and some other, you know, it's, it's darker, it's more serious than Lost and Bad at the Bullet We've well, got a real gem, and you're, you're, you're an advocate. I remember the IEP days. This is not an easy thing to get. Parents out there who try to get an IEP for their child, this doesn't mean this child is slow. It just means that maybe they have, they have ADHD or something right. and they're just causing a little problem in the classroom and they're not settling down. It has nothing to do with you have to having to be slow. These kids can be brilliant. Oh, absolutely. It's just the teachers aren't trained and God bless them and they don't know how to... I wouldn't, you know, if I had a couple of them in the class right. like this. My son is on the autism spectrum and he had an IEP for eight years. Yeah. And then they said, okay, we think he doesn't need it anymore. And he actually has done amazingly well without it. How he, old is your son now? He is 17. He'll be a senior in high school in the oh, fall. So he's in the same age group. My son's 22. He's a millennium, just like mine. They're a group, aren't they? They, they oh. are. <laughs> but I felt, oh. what, a, what a shame it would be. I, I learned all this. I went through all these. I had done uh, leadership and advocacy training with mass families organizing for change. Yep. I had done their advocacy training. I'd gone back as a mentor. And I thought, what a shame to just let all that go to waste. Yeah. I would love to be able to help someone. Because an IEP is complicated. And At all. And they'll fight you. They will fight you. It's a big. It, 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 oh, yeah. you have to, uh, we finally got a mentor. It was free from, is it a mass federation in, uh, in Boston? Oh, yes. She was wonderful. Yes. She'd go from our room to their room, calmly, perfect, and everything was settled. Yep. How do you get the word out? I mean, I know you're on Amazon. I am. But now, how can people uh, reach you? Um, you could email me at edlyn, E-D-A-L-Y-N-N-E, -E, at hotmail.com. I mean, check my email all the time. Okay, so. and they could get a book from you Absolutely. as well as Amazon. As well as Amazon. Yeah. As Amazon. Amazon's probably better to get it from because yeah. then, you know, shipping is all taken care of and, and you know, go through the process. But certainly anybody could email me. Are you appearing book. places? Are you yet? Yeah. Have you been going places? I have up? done a couple of appearances at libraries, one mm -hmm. in Oxbridge mm -hmm. and one in Whitensville. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a good start. It is a good start. It is a good start. There's so many possibilities out there. And I, 
I enjoyed doing those. I was less afraid of the public speaking part than of being there by myself. Yeah. And, and people show up, so it well, was You fabulous. had a good presentation immediately, and, and you know with this, you could, you have the multi-talented thing going. You've got the advocacy, you've got the miscarriage knowledge, you've got your book writing. You have three, at least three different genres that you could go through and speak, and speak well. And is there anyone in particular that you love, or you just love them all? <laughs> You're like, I am like, oh my God, I love all of these. I, I just, I love to learn new things. I love to try new things. I just am really interested. I'm interested in too many things sometimes. Oh, I, I know think. the feeling. Do you have your own office at home? I do. Yeah. Is it, it uh, uh, is it messy or clean? Oh, it's messy. Like a, like a teenager? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I have stacks. I have piles. <laughs> I have. Oh, yeah. It's like. I'll say to my husband, it's a neat pile. He said, there's no such thing as a neat pile. It's still a pile. It drives like, you know, Monk on TV. Mm -hmm. Someone like Monk would go bananas. Yes, would have a hard time oh. living with me, yes. It's because it's like I never outgrew my teenager. You know? I remember as a child, Mom would say, clean your room. So to me, cleaning my room would be lining the stuffy animals down one wall, the other wall it was small, you know, and everything. And it, it just wasn't, I didn't quite get it. I mean, what do you want me to do? You know, I mean, there's not that much wrong. So I'd line the walls with all these animals and then put them in bed at night, line them all in the bed to keep them warm. So mom and dad would come in at night and there was no room for me. So they'd be taking them all out, these animals. They'd taking the thumb out of my mouth. The suction was so hard, mom couldn't do it. Dad had to get it done. Did you, did you go through that too? Not really, but I've always been messy. I've never been neat. Albert Einstein, let's see if I can remember the quote. Albert Einstein said, if a messy desk is the sign of a busy mind, what is a clean desk? Then? Yeah. Kind of I'm paraphrasing, that's not the exact quote, no, I got but you. words to that effect. We're not that bad. We're <laughs> yeah. just very creative. Exactly. <laughs> notes. Do you have notes? Oh, I have notes. Was, I write to-do lists. Oh, I, I have to in the car. It's like what you're doing today. Yeah. Because I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to just keep sailing by places I'm supposed to be. <laughs> that's not cool. Exactly. And I always have multiple things going on. They drive my kids crazy because I'll be working on the computer. And they, they're like, you've got 15 tabs open. But that's how I like to work. How many children do you have? I have two. And the They're others. both boys. They're 14 and oh, 17. Oh, God bless you. Yeah, boys. I think boys are tougher in the very beginning, in the little years, to about eight or nine. And suddenly, they sort of, I noticed just that Oh, okay, you know, you see what, what you get. Yeah, hi, ma, how you doing? The girls start going like, oh, well, you know, then we got problems, 10, 11, 12. More attitude, yeah. That's what I noticed. <laughs> what, b before I got married, I used to say, you know, I want that house where everybody hangs out and feels yeah. comfortable. Yeah. And I have that house. <laughs> and I keep saying yeah. to my husband, tell me again why I wanted that house. He said, I don't know, you seem to know what you were talking about. So we have them and all their friends just over all the time. It's busy, it's crazy, it's loud. <laughs> so you got chaos. All the time. The one thing I could not handle. In fact, my, my, my blog is actually called The Forces of Chaos. Are you sounds so, so, Okay, all right, yeah. Because my boss used to come over at work and say, what are you working on? And I'd tell him I'm battling the forces of chaos, which wasn't untrue. Did you grow up in chaos? Um, somewhat. Yeah. It, uh, it, there's not as much chaos at my parents' house as there was from, yeah. at my house. Chaos and I don't get along. I'll go out the door. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is Christine Boucher. And she is the author of Lost and Found at the Bolodrome. And uh, it's just a great little book. And it's just, uh, I'm glad to see you got something to print here. And I'm expecting more, right? We're Absolutely. We're going to more. You We're going to get the word out more about you because you've got so many different good things going. We're going to have to come have you back next time, cover your advocacy, cover your miscarriage. Um, I'd love to come back. We would love to have you. I would love to Thank you back. so much for being here. Thank you for having we'll me. see you next time. I'll be my guest. Thank you. Run, river, run, run through the hills, run, river, run to the sea, run, river, run to your place beneath the sun.